Hello students, I hope you're all doing well. Uh, I am Rebecca and I am your tutor for the history subject for class 12. Today is my first class with you all, so uh, I would, before I take my class, I would like to introduce a little bit on the history subject, especially your textbook. Students, please get hold of your textbook. This is the themes in Indian history by Raghunath Rai. It has uh, 15 chapters in total, and there will be a map work, which is on the map of India. If you turn on the third page of the syllabus, you will find the distribution of the marks. In total, the theory carries about 84 marks and six marks for the map, which comes to a total of 90 marks. There is a project work also for 10 marks, which is internally assessed by the teacher in your own institution. So that I hope you have understood a little bit on the introduction of the history textbook and your syllabus. As for today, I'll be taking on the first chapter, chapter one, that is the story of the first cities, the Harappan archeology. span If you have your textbooks at home, kindly take it a note and open on the first page. Of the many ancient civilization that the world has produced, we can say that the Indus Valley civilization is a very unique feature. The feature it has given is that it laid the foundation of the world's earliest urban society. And this has given a major boost, especially to our country, India. It is located, the location of the civilization, it is in the northwestern part of India and the most parts of modern Pakistan. You will find the map of the spread of the civilization, especially if you turn to page number seven, where a map has been clearly given about the spread and the extent of the Harappan civilization. Next, we see on the discovery. How was the Harappan civilization discovered. It is more or less, we can say that it was discovered by mistake. In 1857, uh, 56, there was a construction that was going on between Lahore and Multan, a railway construction, where they found millions of bricks that is called ita, we can say. It was found, millions mounted and from there, there was an inquisition that a new discovery has been made. In the year 1872, uh, another site, there was a mount, two mounts of 14 to 18 meters high, where similar nature of the bricks were found. In the year, again, you will find that later on, in the year 1921, R.D. Banerjee, R.D. Banerjee was carrying out his excavation work for a Buddhist stupa and he excavated the same material, the bricks again at the site called Mohanjadaro. At the same time, around the same time, another man, R.D. Dayaram, had also discovered the same material, again, the big bricks around the same place, not in the same place, I'm sorry, around Mohanjadaro. So in the year 1924, Sir John Marshall, who was then the Director General of the Archaeological Survey of India, he made a declaration, he made a historic declaration that indeed a civilization as old as the 5000 BC was discovered and had been laid buried there in the northwestern part and most parts of Pakistan. So likewise, a lot of inquisition had come, both nationally and internationally, saying that such a massive discovery has been carried on. So a lot of researchers, a lot of historians had come and applied different techniques, especially stratigraphy and another technique that is called the ex surface exploration. By the year 1950, 1960 and the latest in 1990, new sites has been, had been discovered in Lothal in, in 1950, Kalibangan, Rajasthan, and in 1990, again, another place in Gujarat that is called the Dholavera. All these excavations, all these sites made it known that indeed a great civilization had 
existed at that time. The Harappan civilization has another name that is called the Indus Valley Civilization. And this civilization, and this civilization flourished between 3,300 to 1,300 BC. The first findings of this civilization, we can say it was because by mistake through the exploration of or through the finding of the burnt bricks. So in order to understand this whole period from 1300 to 3300 to 1300 BC, we can say that the historians had divided into five portion. Part one, starting from 1300, 300, 3300 BC, and part five to 1300 BC. The period between 2600 BC to 1900 BC is considered to be the most matured period of the Harappan civilization. Now students, you will ask, why is it called matured? It was called matured because it was during this time that most of the settlement had developed a major urban settlement. Remember, class, I've already mentioned the Harappan archaeology, which studies the Harappan civilization, is a civilization which laid the foundation of the world's earliest societies. To understand further, after the discovery of this place, where the civilization has taken, we need to look at the extent or the area of the spread of this particular civilization. Please look at page number seven, where the map has been given for the spread and extent of the civilization. Page seven, of your textbook. It is said that in total, the total area of the whole civilization was 12,50,000 square kilometers. And the north and the south had a kilometer of 1,400. And from the east to the west, it covered a kilometer, 1,600 kilometers. This showed that it had a large extent. It covered, we can say that this particular civilization had spread to a great extent. So if when we look at the extent in the area, it becomes very important to know the number of settlements. So the number of settlements, what is the number of settlements? No civilization takes place without a city or a settlement. So this become very important. By the year 1947, it is said when the British left India, it is said that there were 40 settlements. But as time passed by, it has increased. The discovery or the excavation has increased to 1,400 settlements. Of the 1,400 settlements, 925 settlements are in India and 475 settlements are in modern Pakistan right now. Now the civilization was not like an ordinary civilization. The civilization took place near the river Indus and some of the important rivers like Ravis, uh, Saraswati, Ganga. These are a few of the rivers that is mentioned within this civilization. Now, uh, in the extent of the area of the civilization, we have to look at one very important point. The pattern of civilization near the water area. These settlements, the total number of 1,400 settlements did not randomly, did not, it did not come into settlement Randomly, It is said that they look, when the historians, archaeologists, and the researchers look further into the matters, the settlement was mostly near river areas. So the distribution of this settlement is called water area or water area settlements. 
So we find here, out of the 14 set 1,400 settlements, 40 settlements is located around Indus and Indus River and its distributaries, and around 1,100 settlements, that is like the 80% of the settlements, 1,100 settlements, that is the 80% of the settlements was located between Indus and the Ganges and a little bit beyond the Saraswati River. The remaining 250 settlements, it is said, the settlement that is, uh, that is accounted near the river, it is said that it was located in the Saraswati area, extending up to Gujarat and Maharashtra. So I hope, uh, students, by now you have understood the area or the location where exactly this great civilization took place. Of the 1,400 settlements, students, please remember, in your syllabus, we're going to study only two main centers, that is the Harappa and the Mohan Jodaro. Harappa is located in modern Sahiwal in Pakistan on the banks of the river Indus, and Mohan Jodaro, which also which means the mount of the dead. The mount meaning is mount of the dead because a number of skeletons were found in, during the time of the excavation. This is located in modern Sint again in Pakistan on the banks of the river Indus. So from here we can understand that the civilization was based near the river. In order to study the ancient past, certain methods are applied. And one of the most important uh, methods that is used is called archaeology. Archaeology is the study of the human past or prehistory where the process of excavations of sites are taken place and there is an analysis of the artifacts that has been excavated and other physical, physical uh, items. In the case of the Harappan civilization, you will find that the excavation carried out mostly in the form of buildings, bricks, and hard items. That is how we know. Why is archaeology, why was archaeology very important in the study of the civilization? The main important point is that the Harappan civilization did not have any written records, nor did they have a particular alphabet. They used a kind, for the writing, they used a s item or a method called seal or sealing, and it was more in a pictographic form. Pictographic is, if you want to, ex if you want to explain, for example, if it is a bird, there will be a seal and there will be a picture of a bird, and that is called pictographic. So since there was no record, written record to know of the ancient past, the method of archaeology was greatly used in order to study this civilization. For this, to, to carry on the work of the archaeology, the work of an archaeologist became very important, besides the historians and the scholars. So the study of this civilization, the archaeologists needed to identify a lot of items that was excavated under earth. And this is called an identification of the artifacts that was used during this ancient time between 1300 to 1300, 3300 to 1300 BC. We will just take out, I will just take out one, two points, what were the artifacts. Some of the artifacts that was identified by the archeologists was like the grinder, the grinder or the saddle quern, the saddle quern. This we can say or we can compare it to a modern day mixer grinder which we use electronically. 
it was the wind archaeologists they dug the ground, they found a number of grinder quints, and it was of two types. One type was a stone that was pushed on a flat stone that had already been laid on the ground for making masala or spices, and another was a pounding, sto pounding stone, similar case, in order to pound the spice. And the second type was known as the curry stone. So uh, this was the first artifact that was excavated by the archaeologists. The second important point uh, to understand this civilization, uh, this civilization, the another artifact that the archaeologists needed to identify was the center of production. Uh, when we come to a civilization, civilization means a level of uh, the standard of living where, of a certain population at a certain area in the ancient times where they have crossed even the modern living. So the study of the center of production became very important. Center of production like the production of crafts, pottery, sculpt, sculptures, and all artistic items. This came in this category. Thirdly, the archaeologists also needed to understand where all the items of the artifacts from the, how the materials were procured. It is found that the ancient Indus people had contact with the distant land. This we come to know how it is said that uh, precious stones like the lapis lazuli, lapis lazuli is a semi-precious stone was procured from Afghanistan. So they had contact with the Afghanistani or they brought copper from Behran or they brought cotton Material cotton was not grown in the Indus Valley area, so they, took, they brought the cotton material from the Mesopotamian region. So it is very clear that they had contact with the outside world in order to carry out their craftsmanship or to make items. The other important feature we can see In the identification, uh, in the identification of artifacts in order to study this civilization was sculpture. What is sculpture? When excavation was carried out, a number of sculptures were dug out. The material the material were of uh, bronze, metal, or of terracotta. Sculptures were div divided into three categories as according to the discovery it was made. Sculpture that was made out of metals, an example is that of a male torso, which was made out of a red polished stone. Second is sculpture in metal. One of the best example of metal sculpture is of a bronze dancing girl. It, it had a very thin feature, but the, this bronze dancing girl showed that uh, the metallurgist or the, the art, artisan who made those had an idea of iron casting. The next point in the sculpture is the sculpture in terracotta. Terracotta is nothing but burnt clay, which was rough in nature and brown in color. And some of the example, best example of sculpture in a Terracotta was the figure of a woman and it was a mother goddess or Mahadevi. It was named as Mahadevi. So class, I hope you, uh, you have understood what, who, what an archeologist need to look into, which area they need to look into in order to identify their artifacts. Coming to the study of this civilization, Harappa and Mohenjo-Daro, as the earliest civilized, uh, civilized centers of the ancient world, we need to take into consideration why. Why is Harappa or why is the Harappan civilization or the Indus Valley civilization called the urban, uh, urban first ancient urban uh, society? There are certain points that 
boost up this civilization to be considered as an urban civilization is because of few factors. The first factor is because of down planning. Just to take the note that as ancient as this BC, an age in this BC, the cities had already down planning. Harappa was a city larger than Mohanjotaro, but they said that the development within these two cities were very similar. I will just point one, two points why they had a very good planning. It is said that probably they had a very good municipal body to take care of the sanitation. Think about it, sanitation to give a proper hygiene to the population of the city. In Mohanjataro, it is said that the drainage system, or as we call it, Nala, in Nagamis, we can say that Mohanjataro had the best drainage system. Their drains were not open, but closed, and they opened it only when they needed to do a regular cleaning. Another point for the drainage, layout of the drainage system in these cities where every house Every house in the city had a proper drainage system that came and, that came and drained out to the main, seat, main drain that was laid out in the street. Then these drains had a larger drain where during the season of rainfall, when there was rain, heavy rainfall, the water were washed out through the larger drain. So we can see the system of uh, sanitation had already been developed during the civilization. Not only was the drain well-maintained, another is the sewage system. There was a proper sewage system already in these towns. Every house, there was a line, or you can see a point was connected to the main pit. A pit was dug in the street where the sewage from the houses were put in. So we can see why the civilization, from this note, we can find out the town planning, why it was indeed a civilization. Second point, we can look at why, at the same time, we can say that why this civilization reached an urban characteristic is because of the domestic architecture. architecture. There are six points to be noted in the domestic architecture when we look into the Harappan cities. Uh, first was the dwelling place. Second was the great bath, the great bath at Mahanjotaro. Third was the great granary at Harappa. The fourth was an assembly hall at uh, Mahanjotaro again, a dockyard at Lothal and the Sidatals. Of these six points, I would like to mention only two points for your brief understanding about the domestic architecture. One was the Great Bath at Mohanjodaro. The Great Bath at Mohanjodaro was, again, the material that was used for constructing this Great Bath was burnt bricks or ita. And you will find that this swimming, it was a great bath, which was a swimming pool, but we do not know exactly where, whether this great bath was used for religious purpose or for entertainment of the public. But a scholar called Glairstone, he has commented on this great bath that this bath was equivalent to a swimming pool near a seaside modern resort. The swimming pool, it uh, had uh, 2.4 meters in depth, and here again, another point to be noted is there was a proper drainage where the water was taken out and filled in with water with the well that was located near the bath. The second feature or uh, characteristic that I want to mention in the domestic architecture is uh, the great granary, that which was located at Harappa. The great granary uh, was like a godown or a storehouse of grains uh, that was kept by the city municipal or by the city officials. And it is said that this granary was uh, not a 
just not an ordinary size, but it had uh, two big blocks, and these two blocks was divided by around 23 feet in between. The blocks were further divided into compartments and into small chambers, and these chambers each were stored with the type or the items, items of food that needed to be kept in each, in each area. So the great granary, again, great granary in Harappa was also another important feature that we can take note of. So these are the two important points for the identification of uh, the civilization which had a characteristic of urban nature. One point I want to note here, class, uh, about the progress of this civilization is again in the field of artifacts that is in pottery. It is said that pottery had uh, reached its highest level during the time of the civilization. How do we know that it had refined itself in the artistic field of pottery? It was not only a pot, but it is said that the pots were uh, later on made on wheels, and these pots were painted on the outside and was given a glossy look. They glazed the outer so that it will have a polished look on the pots. They were uh, domestic pots, like cups and saucers and dishes and bowls, and also pots like vases for decorative purposes. So at the same time, there was another development in the field of pottery was that outside the pots, there was paintings of not only of nature, artistic nature, artistic painting, but storytelling of the around a pot. For example, like there was a bird with a fish and with a fish, it was a fish, and there was a fox looking up. And we all know what, I think we all know what that story which we have read in, when we were in the lower classes. So the, we can, uh, so it is said that even in pottery making, it was not only the potters, but the painters were involved in this artistic field. These are some of the important features that we can look into making this civilization a progressive one. The last point I want to take up for today in this uh, chapter is on the religion. The religion that was followed by this uh, civilization, we can, though uh, there is no definite point to it, but from all the excavations and the seals and the figurines and all the pictographic, pictographic seals that was discovered, it can come to a conclusion that this, uh, this civilization practiced Hinduism as the gods that they worship as the gods that they worship during the time. No particular temple or no religious, no religious material was excavated either in Harappa or in Mohanjadaro. The religion that was practiced, practiced was more of worshiping the gods in the form of different procedure like making it into a seal, making it into an idol. It is said that there was a cult of mother goddess. There was worship of Lord Shiva, worship of animals, worship of trees, worships of fire, water, and uh, fire, water, and the sun, and also of a priest king. The worship of uh, the animals, in the worship of the animals, it was not literally the animals, but they worshiped the animals in two forms. 
One was a demigod, that is a half man and a half animal. The second in the worship of animals was they worship animals and consider them to be the vehicle or the vahanas of the superior god. For example, Shiva used the bull as his vehicle or uh, the buffalo was used as the vehicle of the god Yama or the tiger was used as the vehicle for Makali. So this was, uh, this was very significant from all the seals that was discovered during this time. In the religion, in the worship of the different gods, in the, uh, we see there was the worship of trees. The trees came as sacred trees and those were the people tree and the name tree, which is even uh, practiced today in India for most Hindus as well. The most important, uh, the most important figure here was uh, the worship. We cannot really say whether it was the worship of this priest king, but a bust, the head of a man. If you turn to page number 19, you will find the picture of that particular head. Uh, it is said that he might have been a man who was involved both in politics as well as in religious uh, activities. So he was known as the priest king. So this is about the religion of, that was practiced during this time. So class, I hope uh, you have come to understand a few of the important uh, features of this particular civilization. Uh, we will be concluding the whole chapter in the next class again. So in the meantime, uh, in the meantime, when we have small gaps, please practice a reading habit. And I would also like to tell all the students to stay home. That way you are saving the lives of others and uh, life for yourself also. Thank you.